Hey British babes and welcome to my book nook. For those that are new around here, the name's Rainy Barton. I teach music, I also read books, all different genres, mainly thrillers, but I also love romance, fantasy, historical fiction, YA, like all the things. So if you're interested in books, stay tuned. As you can hear, my voice is a little bit gone because I took a trip to Maryland last week with my family and I lost it at Six Flags because one does when you go on a bunch of roller coasters, you're screaming and you know, all the fun stuff. Anyway, it was a blast. But today's video, we're not talking about that. We're talking about my June wrap up and all of the books that I read in June. I had a pretty great reading month. Um, basically, I've been having a great year. I don't know if it's because I don't grade or rate books enough like harshly enough, maybe I'll get better at that over time as I finally started really reading this year. But I also just kind of know what I'm gonna like. Like I'm pretty good at figuring out what books I think I'm gonna like, which books I think I'm not gonna like, and then I don't read those. But every so often it's hit or miss for me. Um, so yeah, I had a really great month and I just wanna tell you all about it. So I'm gonna jump into my stats. If you're not interested in stats, you can skip past it. That's why I always put the timing at the bottom. But if you're interested in that sort of shiz, here we go. Also repping my summer ween shirt uh, for Gabby and Olivia's summer ween, which starts on the 15th. But I got one of the um, tank tops so that I could wear it for circus. So hence why I'm that. And then I'm also sporting Harry Potter because hello, Harry Potter's my favorite thing ever. If you saw that in my favorites um, book video from a couple weeks ago. But anyway, let's jump into stats. I have my laptop on my lap to give me the stats. So if you see me looking down, that is why, so that I don't forget a stat and I keep it in the same order for all my videos. Okay, so anyway, as of this month, I read 11 books. So it was just one shy of like what my typical number is. I actually read less because I thought I was gonna read more because I'm off summer break, but I've been filling my time with other stuff. So I had to rush to read a bunch of books at the end so that I had more than like four books to talk about for this thing. So I read most of them in the last week. And then as far as my page count goes, I read 300 or 3,677 pages. I basically always get around the 3,500 to 3,700 page mark. Like that's typically where I meet every single time. And I didn't DNF any books this month. And as far as hours listened, I listened to 35.25 hours. Uh, my biggest month was January with 66. My second was 43. So this was like kind of average, kind of just in the middle. And then as far as my reading methods go, I read three books physically and then I read eight mixed media because as we know by now that's my favorite thing to do is listen to the audiobook and have the book with me at the same time. As far as my genre types go, I was in my thriller bag for this month because I read six thriller, three romance, that's always like the second one. Um, I read one fantasy, it was more like a fantasy thriller, and then I read one YA LGBTQ like literary fiction novel. That was for my book club. It was a fantastic book. We'll get to that soon. As far as my book types go, I read 11 novels. None of them were like new age on, um, and none of them were like short story. And then my ratings, I had one two star. I barely give out two stars. One two star, two four stars, three four point five stars, and five five stars. So like I told you, this is probably one of my best reading months, if not my best reading month. I need to go back and actually like check the stats, but um, I'm pretty sure last I checked, 50% of the books that I've read this year, and I've read 63 books, have been five stars. So that's pretty solid, just saying. As far as the age range goes, I've read 10 adult books, one YA book, and then the years that they were published, one was from 2019, one was from 2020, and nine were from 2022. So like I said, I'm all about getting on my anticipated reads for this year. Um, how, as far as the method of how I got them, I own all of the books because I'm obsessed with owning books. Uh, but one was an arc for my friend. Like the first official draft like hasn't even been edited yet and I got to be the first person to read it. So that was really exciting. We'll get into that one super soon. And then 10 of them were standalones and one was a series, the end of the series. So I finished the series. Woo! I can add that to the list because I have a shit ton of series that I need to read still. I'm unfortunately sad to reveal that I didn't read a single person of color book this month like an author like person of color and I'm sad about that so I need to fix that for this next month so we live and we learn anyway I did read nine new authors though and two returning uh, so my two returning authors were Tessa Bailey and Ren Montgomery my friend and so that was really good but I have a lot of new authors of course all right but now we're done with stats I think the order that I'm going to actually share my books this time, like I'm going to go out of order, is I'm going to share them based off of how excited I was to read each one of these. And I'm going to put them in order of like my most anticipated read that I really, really wanted to get to 
to the bottom. So let's do it that way, why not? Okay, so we're mixing it up. So it's not gonna be in order of like two star to five star. It's just gonna be the book that I was most anticipated to read first, and then we're gonna go down to least anticipated. So the book that I wanted to read the most out of all of them this month was One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. And she also wrote, I believe, a book called The Perfect Marriage. I haven't read that yet, but I don't know. This one, like I had heard Haley Hughes, who you know I'm obsessed with, read this and love it. And she was just saying that it was basically like rich women, socialite, like domestic housewives drama. And I don't know, I'm just here for that. Like domestic thrill are my jam. So anyway, this one was really good. It's about a bunch of, like I said, socialite like women that are just like gossiping and like trashy and just like they're terrible people. And they all just have their issues with each other, like this and the other. And they have this hairstylist that like knows everything because they all go to this hairstylist for like all of their stuff. And so she knows all of their secrets and shiz. And she's getting interviewed by the police because there was a murder. One of them was murdered. And you don't find out who was murdered until like the 92% mark. So you basically go the whole book not knowing who was murdered or why and so I absolutely loved this the way it was written was just phenomenal like I was eating it up like I wanted to just keep reading it like I was very much in for the gossip and the drama and the scandal like that was just fantastic to me however it ended up being a four star I will actually did I make it a four star or a 4.5 star it ended up being a 4.5 star for me I did knock half of a star off for this why because I wasn't very happy with the ending like I said, you don't find out who gets murdered. Honestly, it's actually not even until like the 96% mark. I think there's like 10 pages after you find out who was murdered and why. And who mur who was murdered, like I get, but who murdered them, I don't get because it was just very out of character for this person and it didn't make sense. And it was kind of out of character, the whole situation and like how it came about. And then there wasn't enough pages after to like really wrap it up in a way that like would have been okay. I just feel like it was kind of rushed at the end. And this book is about 302 pages, so it could have been a little longer. You could have added like 50 more pages and really like explained it and like helped set it the scene a little bit more. And so because of that, I did bump it down half of a star. But I, the vibes of this book were spectacular. I loved it from start to finish. I mean, setting all of that aside, I would still highly recommend this. I'm very happy with this. I really, really did enjoy this. But like I said, I just feel like they didn't wrap it up in a way that I would have liked, but still a great read. The next book that I was highly anticipated to read, I've been wanting to read this ever since because I've been trying to catch up to all of the books in Haley Hughes book club because I joined when she started her Patreon, but I've always been reading the books slightly behind schedule. Like I'm reading Pretty Girls right now and that was our June pick and I should be starting our July pick, but you know, I'm just a hot mess express. And that was The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry and this was a four star. I very much enjoyed this. And you're going to find out why I knocked it down a star for this one as well. Uh, but I was told that this one was basically a better version of The Push. And I only slightly agree with that. I feel like this was a better written book, a better, like a more well-crafted book. Because Lucinda Berry, if you don't know, I'm pretty sure she actually was a psychologist or psychiatrist in her like day job. And so she writes all of these books, like her thriller books with like good therapy and psychology like background and like it actually makes sense and like researched well. And so like if you are a therapist and you're reading these like you'll be like oh that's actual like good representation like because a lot of people write mentally insane patients or like other things like that and they don't write them like the way that they actually should be portrayed and so for that this is a better well-written book and to be fair the push that was ashley aldrain's first book like i believe lucinda berry's written a couple more books but outside of that I thought the push was a lot more interesting, especially in the ending. It had a very dramatic like ending like that last sentence is like, oh shit, like I need to help these characters. This fell very flat for me in the ending. It was like all of this build up, like if you don't know what this is about, it's about Christopher and Hannah. They're happily married surgeon and nurse and they have, they've been wanting to have kids for forever, but they um, are struggling with infertility. All of a sudden this kid comes to the hospital, like this six year or five year old girl that basically has been like terribly abused, like was chained in her closet and like beaten by her like drug addict mother and then was found alone by herself because her mother was murdered. And so like they decide like the dad, the dad grows a bond with her as like her surgeon and then eventually decides maybe we should adopt her. She's the kid we could have had. And so of course they adopt her and like she ends up being problematic because you know, that's what happens to those type of children. And she starts really hating the mother, but not doing this to the dad. And so it's like that whole like, oh, she said, he said sort of thing. And the dad's not believing her and all that shit. And then, you know, other stuff goes down and I was loving it. And then the end happens and like, it just ended in a way that you're like, wait, the book just ended there. Like 
it wasn't dramatic it wasn't like oh no like it was just kind of like and then it ended and you're like it shouldn't have ended there. You know, like, why did it end there? Like, it didn't, it just was a huge let down to like the rest of the book. So I had to draw, knock it down a whole star, quite honestly, because I was just not impressed with this ending. I still absolutely loved this book. I thought this book was awesome. And like I said, it's more, it's better. It's well crafted and better than the push in that regard. But I thought the push was a better book, honestly. Uh, so yeah, this was a great read. I still recommend it and I'm still excited to read more Lucinda Berry books but I definitely was excited to read this one. All right the next book that I was very highly anticipated to read because basically everyone on BookTok and Instagram is reading it and I had to like get in on the you know fun is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This ended up being a 4.5 stars four and a half and I'll explain why it is all about these endings people. I just feel like if you don't have a solid ending you're gonna lose a star or so from me and depending on like how bad it was you could lose a whole star like the perfect child did. But this one is like the perfect like you know, summer romance about this girl named Persephone and Sam. And basically they live, Sam lives in like this lake house area and the Persephone's parents own a lake house or rent a lake house there every summer. And so they grow up together through the summers and it's like six summers of them together as friends from like 13 to like 19. And then some tragic event happens between the two of them and they don't speak for like 10 plus years. And then all of a sudden he, she gets a call from Sam told her brother that his mother has passed, their mother has passed away. And so she's returning back 10 years later to the lake house to see Sam after this tragic event. And you, throughout this, don't know what the tragic event is for the longest time. And it's flashing back between each of the summers and then present day, which I'm really enjoying. I loved the past, like the summer vibes. Like I loved getting to like see their relationship grow and blossom. And Sam is just this really sweet guy. And like their relationship was like really cute to see. And I just loved the family dynamics. And all of that really worked for this book. What didn't work for this book was one, the tragic event, because I don't stand by it. I'm not going to say what it was, but I think it was really shitty. And then second, it also was like all of this happened in like the last 30 pages. They waited until the last 30 pages to say what the tragic event was. And then they just skipped past it as if it never really happened. And like it resolved itself within like a page. And I was like, for that to have happened... And like all of this stuff and you not speaking in like 10 plus years, like, and for that to be the thing that drove it apart, like that wouldn't get resolved in 10 years. I don't care if you say, oh, I forgave you forever ago. Like, I'm sorry. I just, I don't accept it. So that's why the half star was knocked off because I was just not impressed. I was not impressed with that. I don't know why people are waiting so long to like announce what's happening. Also, if you're gonna put something like that, that far in the book, don't put it, don't put it in here. I feel like you're just like, I don't know, giving away plot points at that point. Like if it's not going to be a reveal that's anytime soon and it's going to be at the end of the book, I don't know why it's there. I don't know. That's just my rant on books. Um, but yeah, I was a little upset about, it, about the ending. I thought it was kind of rushed. All these books are rushing their endings or they're just falling flat. I don't know. But I really enjoyed this still. It was still a four and a half star. It was definitely the perfect summer beachy read. So if you're looking for one, definitely check this out. Then the next book that I was highly anticipated to read was my friend's book, uh, was my friend's book, I Need Something Good to Happen by Ren Montgomery. And so this is, they write a lot of different eclectic stuff. Like I'm about to read a book of theirs called Haunt, which is like this Christian dystopian religious like horror book. And then the book before that was a thriller. And then this one was a fantasy thriller. So they write all different sorts of stuff. And this one, I am blanking on everybody's names right now. Why am I blanking on everybody's names? It's fine. I'm not going to give too much information. Actually, I don't think my friend wants me to give a lot of information at all yet because it hasn't come out yet. But basically, it's a fantasy thriller that involves monsters and all this other kind of stuff. And it was very good. I very much enjoyed it. I was really excited that I got to be one of the first people to actually read this book and like let it be seen in the public day like I got to read the first official draft like before it's even been edited and shiz and I was able to actually help edit it and I thought that was really cool I've never been able to be a part of that sort of process um so yeah in fact my whole like they let a couple of us read it like my close friends and I so that was really awesome when the book comes out I will definitely let you know I am excited though because part of it since it's about monsters I am a singer songwriter also and one of my favorite songs I've ever written in fact my favorite song I've ever written is called monsters are we which I own I also have on my arm and the book, like, you know how some books come with, like, playlists and stuff? That one, like, the whole book is centered around that song and the lyrics I wrote. And so the lyrics are going to be in the book along with a link to my song that you can listen to. And I'm really excited about that. So when it comes out, I will definitely let you know. So 
you can see. All right, then the next book that I was very much anticipating, like I wasn't, it wasn't on my anticipated 2022 reads because I didn't know this author. I didn't know about it. And then uh, Gabby read it and it looked really intriguing. And then I saw it at the bookstore and I just kind of impulse purchased it. And then I was like, oh, I'll read this eventually. And then it just kept calling to me. So I read it sooner than later. And that was Hidden Pictures by Jason Rekulak or Rekulak. I don't really know. Um, yeah, so this book is creepy as hell. I don't recommend reading it at night. I'm taking off my um, headband because it's coming off. I don't recommend reading it at night. Anyway, it is one of those like scary picture books with Mallory who used to be a drug addict. She's a recovering drug addict and she gets hired as a babysitter for like these rich folks named Ted and Caroline Maxwell and she's supposed to look after their five-year-old son Teddy and she loves this job. She lives there. Teddy and her have this really great bond and then all of a sudden like and he always loves to draw but then all of a sudden his artwork starts to get more and more sinister and his stick figures are turning into like these really lifelike scary sketches that like are far beyond the scope that any fi normal five-year-old would be able to draw and so she begins to suspect that these are pictures of an unseen an unsolved murder that happened in the house that they are living in currently and so with help from a handsome landscaper that she meets and their next door crazy like psychic neighbor she sets out to try and figure out what the images are and save teddy before it's too late and like i said this book's really creepy so like here's like where his pictures are just kind of like in the beginning and then you get to like the end and it's looking like some really scary shiz so anyway the pictures really enhance the story. So if you're going to read this, I strongly recommend you have the book. Now, I mean the book. The audiobook does say what the images are, which I appreciated. Um, and that's not, that text is not in the actual book. However, it's still not the same as in actually getting to like see what they are actually looking at. So if you're going to read this, definitely have the book, uh, the physical book. The audiobook was good as well, but I still recommend having the physical book. So anyway, I gave this a five star. I absolutely love this. This book was fantastic and I was not expecting the ending at all. I thought it was going to go one way and then it went a totally different way that I was not expecting and I very much enjoyed it. I thought it wrapped up really well and that like the ending some people will say like oh I don't think it should have ended that way but I totally think it should considering all that happened and I'm not going to say more because then I would give stuff away but this was just really good. I loved I loved the whole thing. It was very scary, very spooky vibes. I definitely recommend it. I don't know. I just, I read it super fast and it was a good time. So if you're looking for a book that, you know, has like mixed images or like, what is that called? Mixed media images, elements. I don't know what you call that when it has, when you actually have other stuff in it. Like Grady Hendrix does this all the time with his books. Then definitely check it out. It was solid. All right, the next book that I was very excited to read was The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon. And you have probably heard me talk about this book by this point if you've watched my videos because I did a favorite books of all time. And then I mentioned it at one other point. This is in my top 10 of all time right now. I love this book. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I gave it one star. I'm kidding. I gave it five stars. Um, so I'm not going to say much about it, but it's basically a Frankenstein retelling about Helen Hildreth. She's like the master of Frankenstein, you know, Victor Frankenstein. And she, you know, has this mentally ill patient house that's basically just like a Frankenstein thing. And she has two two grandkids, Violet and Eric, and she brings in this little girl named Iris who is like all alone by herself and doesn't have anybody. And she's like different, you can tell. And so they like take her in as like their own. And then that's one timeline. And then the other timeline is like 20 years later with this girl named Lizzie who runs a monsters podcast. And she's searching for this monster in Vermont that has been kidnapping innocent children. And she thinks it's her sister. And so it's all about like how those timelines connect. And like, it like does a really great job at like posing the question of like, what is a monster? And like, what, like, how do you decide, like, how do you define what a monster is? Are they created? Like, are they born like from like abuse, all this sort of stuff. And so it like it was a really good take on like what it means to be a monster and like the whole like monsterness of ourselves and how everybody has like a little bit of monster inside of them, uh, which this was just fantastic. I loved every single thing about this book. I thought it was going to be a four star at the end. And then the epilogue happened and you better believe it turned it right around because if it had not had that epilogue, I would have been like, oh honey, you just ruined the whole book with that because the way it ended, you're like, no, this is not acceptable considering all that we have read up to here. But don't worry, the epilogue saved it, which I'm glad because a lot of epilogues ruin books. Honestly, like in romances, I don't care what they're doing 20 years from now. I just want to know that they ended happy. Like I don't need to see the, oh, I have a kid and like my husband and like my happy life. Like I don't really care the book's over. Uh, but this, this deserved the epilogue. Very happy that it happened. Favorite book. 
The next book that I was excited to read was Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. This was Haley Hughes' uh, May book selection. And of course, I read it in June because as I already said, I'm reading all of her stuff all month behind. And I have never read Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. I own it and everybody says, what the hell are you doing? Why have you not read that? So maybe I'll add that onto like my August TBR or something. Uh, but this one is all about um, Emma who can't sleep. Uh, basically, when her mom turned 40, she started developing insomnia and turned crazy, like psychotic, like tried to like kill her sister or something like that. And so I believe Emma's birthday when this starts is 12 days away from turning 40. And so she's freaking out, starting to lose sleep, is afraid that the same thing that happened to her sister, her mom is happening to her. And so she's afraid. She doesn't know why she can't sleep. And so it's the whole story about that. I'm going to say something that I thought was extremely funny about this book and Hidden Pictures because I read them back to back but I'm not going to because that'll give it away and you're going to be very mad at me if I say it so um there's a connection between hidden pictures and insomnia there's not actually but if you read them both you'll know what I'm talking about anyway insomnia so this was a four star it was only a four star because like I kind of thought the ending was not I mean like she's known for writing very outlandish endings and this was very outlandish however I think it was stupid I didn't think it was very well crafted I didn't really care for like this villain and I didn't need their whole monologue like you know how villains do these evil monologues at the end of books like I just wasn't here for it I just didn't care about it um so yeah it was just a four star because of that but I still really enjoyed it like I loved reading it the whole time like it did keep my attention it was a little slow in the beginning like you have to get past like the first 80 ish pages for it to really pick up um and I still did enjoy it like it's not like I didn't enjoy it it was more than a three star because a three star is just kind of like eh I'm not very invested I was invested I just thought that the ending was a little too outlandish and like kind of tied up too nicely in a bow because of that whole like villain's monologue and stuff so if that doesn't bother you definitely read this but it was good all right, the next one that I was excited to read was Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. Now this one, I don't know. I have had this audiobook been released to me at least two times this year already, and I keep saying I'm gonna read it, and then I don't read it. I don't know why I was putting off this book. Maybe it's because it's the last book in the series. I mean, the first book was It Happened One Summer, which I absolutely was obsessed with, and it was a five star. I don't know. Like, I'd even heard that this book was better than the first, yet I kept slacking, and I kept, like, not reading it. And so finally, I was like, girl, you're gonna read it for a romance vlog, and I did, and it was five stars, so I don't know why I slept on it. It was fantastic. I to this day I think I'm I don't know if I liked it more than the first one I don't know because I really did love the first one so much but this one was just as good Tessa Bailey knows how to write a steamy sex scene that is all I'm saying there is one specific scene in this that I was like oh my goodness like one I could never imagine that actually happening to me and two just listening to it I was like shit like she's got the goods you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying Anyway, this one follows uh, Piper's sister, Hannah, and Fox, which is Brendan's best friend. And he is this reputation as like a sexy, carefree flirt. He like never is serious, can't commit to anyone type of deal. And they became friends in the first book because they are both in love with music. And so like in the beginning of this, this book, this book takes place with Hannah, who still works for like this movie producer and is like in love with him because you know that in the first book. And she's texting back and forth with Fox every day, though, since she moved back to LA or whatever, like they're still best friends. And she's and she's interested in Fox, but he's not interested in her that way. And so, or he is, but she doesn't know that. And so this whole book is following like them tr almost trying to be together, but not. And like Fox having to learn that like, he doesn't have to be like this carefree flirt. Like there's more to him than that. Like he doesn't have to just be like what everybody expects him to be and what everybody has told him that he is growing up. And so this book was actually really empowering in that sense of like Hannah getting to work through his issues with him and him finally realizing that he is worth enough and that he does deserve true love. So this book was fantastic. And like I said, the sex scenes were very steamy. It's fabulous. It's magical. Please read it. And this is the book that made me finish a series. It was a cute little duology romance and I'm all about it. All right, I only have two books left and these books I was not as excited to read about, but one of them was fantastic. And so the first book was Under the Rainbow by Celia Lasky. And this was our My Local Book Club's book pick. And I had never heard of this author before. I had never heard of this book. I bought it on Pango for like four bucks and it was a four and a half star. This book was fantastic. This was the YA LGBTQ book that I picked up. We read it for Pride Month, obviously, and it did not disappoint. And I know that she just came out with a thriller that Gabby just read and loved it. So I'm definitely going to pick up more of her books. But this one was about, it's kind of an interesting topic. It was about this place called Big Bird, Kansas. And basically it's been a nonprofit labels Big Bird the most homophobic town in the US and ends up sending a queer task force to work and live there for two years um, in order to hopefully like 
help them on, like not be the most homophobic town there yeah that's a weird premise because why would you send queer people to a town where they're just going to be like abused and all of that but anyway still grieving the death of her son linda welcomes these newcomers who knows very little about her past and then it follows like a bunch of different characters like avery who's her teenage daughter she's upset that she had to move to los angeles with her mom and like desperate to fit in in her new school but she's afraid that everyone will find out her mom is in charge of the head force or task force and then gabe's an avid hunter who's lived in big bird his whole life and he's suddenly having like issues and like wonders if this task force can help him and so each chapter follows a different character in this town and so my only couple of qualms with it was one I definitely want to hear more from um I wanted to hear more from outside of like their chapter I do like that a lot of these characters were mentioned within other miscellaneous chapters because like of everybody living in the same town but there were some characters that I feel like I didn't get enough from and then there were like one or two characters in this that were not mentioned at all until their chapter and I was like who the fuck is this person who are you like why are you in this book like there was one at the end like I'm kidding you not I was like I've never heard of this person in this book why do they have a whole chapter but this book was just so cute it was very sad I will say that like trigger warning like queer people are treated like shit in this book and there are some mean stuff done to these people um but I thought it was really heartwarming to see like how the town develops and how these characters like develop with one another and like getting to understand that like queer people are the same like everybody else and why do you need to treat them any different this book just gave me all the feels. It was very good. We had a really great discussion about this in our book club and I definitely loved it. I'm very happy that I read it. It was a nice little surprise for me. Honestly, it was the most surprising read of the month and I'm really happy that I had a great time with it. I'm excited to read her thriller. And then let's get to the book that uh, sucked. Suckety suck sucked. And I was least anticipated to read it anyway because I had heard not a single person so far has said this book is good. Like all of the booktubers that I know that have read this book have given it like two stars. I've not seen a five star. And that was Hide by Kirsten White. I also gave it a two star. So it has a great premise about spent about a competition, spending a week hiding in an abandoned amusement park and don't get caught and you get a shit ton of prize money. And there's 14 competitors. They have to do it for seven days. Like it's an abandoned amusement park. It has all the vibes kind of like Hunger Games-esque. Like it, it should be good. But it's not for a couple i mean a bunch of reasons one 14 characters is too many especially if you are giving a lot of background information and stuff on characters that are going to die very early on and then you're not giving a lot of information on characters that are going to make it through the whole like it was like you never really got invested in any character you didn't give a shit about any of the characters honestly and so like there was maybe one or two characters that i kind of liked, but they weren't even like really main characters so it was kind of like whatever but yeah so the whole thing is that um every day two people get eliminated and so they just like if you're the first two found for the day then you don't get to be part of the prize money but they're not just getting they're not just getting eliminated like they're actually getting picked off and you don't know like what from you find out that this this turning out into a very murderous game instead and the main girl mac is like the one that is worried the most because apparently like she was like her whole family was murdered in front of her and like she only didn't get murdered because she was good at playing hide and seek and so like this is very personal for her and she wonders if this is like a whole vendetta against her anyway when you find out what's actually going on, it's the stupidest thing I've ever read in my life. I thought it was complete garbage. I thought it was stupid. I thought it was poorly executed. And by the time that I got to the end, I was like, oh dear God, this book has got to be over. Like I almost DNF'd it. The only reason I didn't was because I wanted to read it. So I had all my thoughts together for Kayla's um, literally dead book club live chat. I heard she also gave it two stars. So I'm very like excited to see her thoughts on this. But yeah, it was, it was atrocious. It was not good. It was like the literally what happened is so stupid and would never happen and I'm sorry it was it was just stupid so anyway I did not like this it's gonna go down as one of the worst books of the year so far but nothing is gonna beat nine lives like that's just garbage um but yeah I do want to read her other book but like it's something about Frankenstein because I've heard that book is fantastic but she definitely missed the mark with this one and with that, those are all the books that I read in June. As I said, I had a really great reading month. In case you want to see like my most to least anticipated again, um, except for my friend's book, this was most anticipated and this was least. So this is basically like how they ranked. Um, but yeah, so I hope that you, I don't know, get some book recommendations from this. Maybe stay away from certain books like hide, like do not recommend, don't read this book. But definitely maybe check out this one, for example, because like that was a hidden gem. But anyway, that is all that I have for you in this video. And with that, I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.